I just wanted to show you a new node group I created. And this this came about at a conversation at work. Uh, Chris Boylan had a really cool idea of trying to make a procedural color palette generator, and I really it sounded super fun, and I really wanted to try it out. And so this was kind of like how I went about creating it. Uh, I'll just open up the group and I'll talk through of what my reasoning was for creating a few things and hopefully might give you some ideas on how to go about creating something like this if, if it's something you're interested in. Now the reason, or not the reason, the, uh, uh, well, why would you want to create something like this? Well, it's just like a, a master shader to quickly iterate something if you have a specific style. Um, yeah, and, it's, and I always like in, enjoy stuff like this too where you know you can like click this and it, it just changes everything, everything that you need like that uh, and of course you can create like separate instances of each thing it's it's super fun okay so these are all sharing the same material but let's say if you have this cube here and let's just create another cube like this and let's add a, uh, a new material like that you can see it's now I can just quickly iterate the colors like this boop, boop, boop. super fast super cool okay so what's happening within this group here? I'll try and make this a bit larger like this, and let's open this. So, I haven't named everything, this is just like a first pass. We can manipulate the location, and I think the only thing that works is the X variable right now. So this kind of controls the size of the gradient. We have the rotation, so you can change where the direction of the gradient's coming from. 90 degrees, by default, it's on this side. Steps talks about like the um, what do you call this? The stepped? Uh, no, uh, I think the posterization or the interpolated ramp. Anyway, it's just like the the slices it takes to get to one color from one color to another. And currently it's at three. So one, two, three. So we can change it to four, and you can see we can keep going on and on and on, and it adds as much as we need. I mean, you could have a hundred, and it's starting to have that interlaced look here. Okay, five, there we go. Oh, I'll go back to three. Okay, uh, this is from the map node, and this kind of like dictates how thin and wide the steps are. So the default is zero to one for both, but this just gives you options to play around with. Same thing with here, and we can change the hue like this in case you're looking for like faster iterations for something. Okay, so if we open this up, it may look a little crazy, don't worry. The only thing that's crazy about it is everything's just the options. Uh, it's just all the options here. So what's happening here? Well, I made a recent video uh, that just talks about manipulating normals like this. And what's happening is I'm, I'm mixing these two together. Now, what do each of these do? Well, the generated looks like this. As you can see, it's just basically saying like, oh, this is how it's all mapped out, the, uh, the normals of the color. Or sorry, the lighting information that hits the model, this is where it's generated. What does the normals look like? And this is what the normals are. And what I'm doing with these two informations is I'm adding it together to generate this kind of look. And I'm putting that into a gradient texture. So it looks like this. So I'm just kind of like adding what the looks are because in my brain, it's like, yeah, that looks about right. So that's what the... Because I wanted the information of the object uh, to come through. Because by default, if we just have the generated, it'll just be a gradient going up. And with the normal look, it lo looks a little too dark. So I kind of like both of these looks, and I added them together to create this. And that's, that's what I like to think about what these nodes are. Or like this math vector node, it's like, I like these two looks, and I want to mix them together. I'll just plug them into the add node, and that's what you see is what you get. Okay, so I've plugged this into the gradient, and now what's happening here is I use this node called a map range. And what that does is it takes this information, and it kind of clamps it and normalizes it so that we can't uh, have like extreme whites or extreme darks. I uh, also clamped it here. I also have the steps here, which if we go back to, let me just bring this down here, tab out. This is what the steps are doing right here. So this controls like how much um, it takes to get from one color to another. 
bring this back up, drag this here. We don't need this. That was a little experiment. So you can kind of see what's happening. You can see it's like glowing a lot and it's not glowing at all because it's normalizing everything. So it doesn't like create huge overexposures. Okay, so what's happening now? Okay, so I'm plugging this result, uh, this, into a mix RGB. And so what that does is it's basically saying, hey, mask it out. Uh, when you're mixing these two colors, use this information. So it's gonna let's say, okay, uh, give me the lightest and darkest and change those colors. And that's what this is doing here. So see the darkest colors up here. We can change this to anything we want. We can make this brighter, darker, any, it just gives you options. Okay, so we have this as mixing based on this. I now have, oh, what's this? A color dodge node, what's happening here? Well, this is a little thing I've been experimenting with because it's, something that I haven't really seen too much and there are some wonderful tutorials of like really great uh, people who've come up with smart solutions in getting that custom lighting I kind of want that real-time aspect of light just to plug it in rather than dealing with uh, rerouting and mapping red green and blue colors sure it might get a little muddy at times if I have too many light sources in but I, I just want that option to be there so what I mean by that is you see, I've, pl I've placed a light source here, and the reason why it's not showing is because I'm... Uh, oh, no, where is it? Shade to RGB. So this is the light source here. Now, it's a little altered, as you can see. It's, it's, it's only lighting up squares, which is odd, because if we look at this, this is just one plane. And the reason for that is because I'm actually uh, in the map range here, you can see I am doing the same thing I did with the colors and I'm like slicing it up. So if we go to the shader to RGB, that's what's happening here. Uh, and I can show you if I go to, let's say 150, it's a smooth gradient all around. So I'm just kind of like slicing it up because I like the, that kind of fast look to it. And so it's dispersing the lights on the normals like that. Oh, let's go back in here. Oh, no. In here. Okay. So that's what's happening here. It's like I'm saying, hey, grab this and separate them into X, Y, and Z. And so that's just the information of where I want the light source to kind of disperse. So what am I doing with these X, Y, and Zs? I'm creating little steps like this. As you can see, I'm cutting them up and I'm combining them back again. So they look like this. And then... I'm plugging it into the mapping, which then I put into this diffuse, which is a shader, and then I'm converting that back to an RGB. Now, I know these are a lot of big, confusing things. So basically what I'm saying is like, hey, uh, the texture that I want to place on, I want to separate, separate it to three different values, or X, Y, and Z. With each of these, I want to like slice them up and make them into like something more stylized. You can put in like noise textures, you can do anything with these here, but that's basically what the thought is. I'm like splicing these up and I'm combining them back again. So I went from this to this, a little more stylized. And then I'm plugging it into a shader because what I'm trying to do with this is I, I need, this is a vital node, or sorry, a vital yeah, node that I need for the next step, which is the shader to RGB, which I'm converting into color now. As you can see, it goes from shader to color. And with this color, it takes in the information of what this is. That, this is the way I can only think about like how I can get this color to appear on my stylized shader. Okay, let's go back here. And I don't keep bouncing up and down. Okay, so that's what the color is happening here. And I'm plugging that, as you can see, boop, right in here as a color dodge. And I have the factored one. It doesn't really matter what this is currently, as you can see, nothing really changes because I chose color dodge. We can clamp it too. But just to show you what other things we can do here, it's like if we add, go back here, linear light. So you can see this is what the shader normally looks like. It's like an emission. And you can see I can slowly add in the linear light. And this this mixing node here is just for the gradient and the lighting. And I would say just go go through the list and find something that pleases 
you know, your eyes or is specific to your own style because something might work. Stuff I'm, I'm showing here may not work for what you have, so you can try mixing it together, which then you'd have to pl plug in a proper mat. Oh, sorry, a proper mask. But I had it at Color Dodge because I found it was like the best of both worlds. Still kept the nice emission here, and you have a little bit of light information. But uh, like I said, there are other stuff here. Like if you wanted it a bit darker, if you wanted it to have a bit softer light, so you have the gradient here. But we'll keep it to color dodge. So we're mixing this and this information together, and we get this. And now we have this real time light that we can move around. And it actually hits our emission. We can plug this up super high. 150 and if you move around you can see what's happening so it's just like tinting the colors that way okay and finally we have a hue saturation node and that's just for extra options here for me so like i can oh i haven't i don't have that plugged in <laughs> my bad okay let's plug this back into here and you can see here i, I do have it changing the light source of the color but this is just for me and my own needs of like quickly iterating like oh is anything cool that i'm missing out like this kind of looks kind of neat uh just uh, extra options i'm also i also don't want to like tab back in and like <laughs> play around with this again or like tab in like oh which one is it is it around here uh we could actually make this a bit smarter too where if i plug that in here that should look a bit smarter now so now the color doesn't change the light color doesn't change well, that's kind of neat retro okay so that's basically how i constructed this node hopefully it's not a little, it might be too advanced i don't know it might not be but just wanted to show you the steps and maybe the um, methods and way of thinking about going things again big on experimentation playing around with these nodes nothing's wrong i mean you can slot anything in here i'll just just a random thought. What happens if I slot in a noise texture in here? Just to see what happens. So plug this in. This is honestly this is how I, I've gotten really familiar with nodes. Just I'm like, I don't know what happens. Let me just slot it in. Okay, so we'll do that. Let's uh let's see what happens if we mix the color instead. So mix RGB's color. Plug the normal in here. Uh plug the factor in here, and let's see what happens. So it looks kinda like that. Okay, cool. Uh, I want more control actually with the texture here, so let's plug this in and let's say object. So it's kind of like map it evenly. And I kind of want darker noise here, so I'm going to use something called the color ramp, plug that in, and we can use something called a constant, which then we can have really hard values that way. Cool. Okay. That looks kind of neat. Let's see what it looks like. So we're going to plug this into this color into add and let's see what happens <coughs> whoa that's funky but as you can see that's really cool I had no idea that would have happened well you know <laughs> all right cool experiment away